Hi guys! I have tried to make this video so many times. This is like my fourth try. I don't even know. I've been trying since like, shit, February to do this video. So, I apologize that it's taken, what, six months, half a year? Yeah, to get it done. Hopefully this is the magic one. Uh, so first of all, I've been really busy lately with getting school ready for the kids. I know a lot of people have been majorly stressed about what they're doing this year with all of the COVID madness going on. Um, but I mean, it hasn't really changed for us because we were already homeschooling. But one thing I did do differently this year, I kind of dropped like all the stuff that was stressing us out. And, um, I just asked the kids, what do you want to learn? Ooh, ooh, ha, fuck. What do you want to learn this year? And so my <laughs> nine year old had this literally an entire sheet of, um, different things that she wants to learn. She wants to learn horseback riding and she wants to learn here hold on I've got it right here what else do we want to learn horseback riding she wants to learn cooking and hairstyling and sewing and art and swimming and wood carving <laughs> and survival skills and fencing as in like with a fencing foil and um, tomahawk throwing human body electricity pottery Latin <laughs> She wants to know everything, so I was like, that's a little bit more of an extensive list than I was anticipating. Poo, hot, fuck, hot, poo, hot. But, so one of the things that pretty much all of the kids said they wanted to learn was ukulele. So, <laughs> I bought not one, not two, not three, but four ukuleles, guys. <laughs> So that we can all learn how to play ukulele this year and then my sister found out and was like can, can we come play ukulele too and learn how to play ukulele so yeah i'm teaching ukulele to all of my children i got the nice one i spent about twice as much on mine as i did on the kids because uh well i'm more trustworthy than my children <laughs> and uh if if they decide that they're super interested in it and are progressing and, and want to continue learning that instrument instead of jumping to another instrument, then they'll get a nice ukulele. But in the meantime, it's the cheapies. So we're going to be learning ukulele and wood carving and all kinds of things this year and we are really excited about our school year. Moving on. I've been wanting to talk for a while about something and it's a little kind of off, uh, off the wall, so bear with me here. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about the ketogenic diet, um, which has been used for epilepsy, also diabetes a little bit, like a long time ago, uh, and kind of a personal theory of mine and my personal experience uh, and how it relates potentially, <whistles> shit, hot bananas, woo, to Tourette's syndrome. So. Before we get into this, this is not medical advice, okay? Make that very, very clear. I am not handing out medical advice <whistles> of any kind. This is just my personal experience and kind of my mental ponderings on the subject. So, first of all, we talk really quickly about the difference between a medical keto diet versus the cultural or diet keto that uh, a lot of us, I think, are pretty well familiar with, you know, eat a lot of fat, don't eat a lot of carbs, is kind of the general gist of it. Woo, fuck, ha, fuck, bananas, hello, woohoo, ha. Um, so, the medical keto diet is a lot more restrictive, ha, than a, the, the diet keto. With a medical keto diet, you stick to a very strict ratio, which it could be 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 3.5 to 1, 4 to 1. And what that means is that for, woo, if you're doing like say 3 to 1, you for every, th <laughs> for every 3 grams of fat, you get 1 gram of either carb or protein which makes it a lot more restrictive than the average um, ketogenic diet that they're doing just to, to lose weight. Um, so you have to weigh everything that you eat. You have to have it measured out to the gram. Um, you also usually have a carb restriction. So in addition to you know being on the ratio, 
you also have a certain amount of carbs that you cannot go over. Um, I was doing about 30 net carbs, which is carbs minus fiber and sugar alcohols. Some people who do this diet for medical reasons can get away with doing net carbs and some have to do just total carbs. And with each meal, you have to have each meal put to ratio. So I couldn't eat, uh, say, if I ate 20 grams of carbs for breakfast, I couldn't say, okay, well, I only have 10 left later in the day and I'll just, you know, I'll, it'll even out. Um, I would have to eat 40 grams of fat with that meal and not eat any grams of protein in order for it to come to a two to one ratio. It'd have to be 60 grams of fat if I were doing a three to one ratio. So yeah, it gets like, <laughs> it's very complicated. It requires a lot of math, a lot of calculations. Woo woo woo. And most of the, um, <laughs> most of the keto products that you can buy in the store uh, are difficult to work with. A lot of them don't actually work with a medical keto diet because it is so strict and so precise. <laughs> um, so I started doing a medical keto diet for my son, which if you'd seen, I think my last, either my last video or my second to last, I talked a little bit about him. Um, his first six months of life, we were in and out of the hospital multiple times. We were in ICU with him with very difficult to control seizures. And he was finally diagnosed with Dravet syndrome about a year ago, which is a really severe form of epilepsy, woo woo woo, and comes with a lot of other comorbidities that I'm not gonna get into now. When I found that out, we were in the hospital with him and I just immediately, I'm like, okay, well, what, <laughs> what do we, what can we work with here? What do we need to do? And so I started researching and researched about the um, medical keto diet, which was used a lot more in about a hundred years ago. Uh, it was a lot more popular, but as we've come out with more pharmaceuticals, uh, it's fallen out of fashion because it is very restrictive. It's very difficult. So um, I started researching and I'm like, well, that's something that I can do that might help. So I'm going to do it because at the time I was pumping for him. Woohoo. Um, and so I figured, you know what, if I do it, maybe it'll increase the fat in my milk, reduce the carbs in my milk. Maybe that will help him out. So I started just kind of cold turkey that day in the hospital, which obviously was not able to do a great job because <laughs> your, your menu is very limited in the hospital. Once I got home, I spent most of that month um, doing more research and figuring out how the medical keto diet works and um, switching myself over. I actually started on a 4-1 ratio, which is about 90% of your diet is fat um, because a gram of fat has more calories than a gram of either carb or protein. It was super difficult. Um, I woke up several nights with leg cramps that were just horrible uh, while I was adjusting. It was it was not pleasant. <laughs> um, but again, my my goal was to do whatever I could to help our son and help him not have the tons of seizures he was having at that time. Uh, so we started working with a dietitian, which um, if you try any sort of a medical diet, that is a really important thing. You want to have some sort of medical professional, some sort of um, professional dietitian on board. Woo, 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 fuck, hot bananas. To make sure you're, ha, ugh. ha. To make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. Um, so you know, I do take a lot of other vitamins in addition to being on keto just because you have to because you it's it's difficult to get what you need just on that much fat. So we started talking to a dietitian um, and angling toward getting our son onto the they have actually ketogenic formula. So they were kind of hesitant, which has been I, I've learned is kind of a common reaction. A lot of times a neurologist won't even consider uh, discussing it until um, you've failed at least like three anti-epileptic drugs. Even then it's difficult. So when I was talking to them uh, for my son, they were like, well, it seems like his seizures are pretty well under control now. And I had to really push and, and say, listen, I'm basically doing this with or without you. He has a G-tube right now. Right now is the time when it's really going to make an impact on him. 
we're starting now so you can be on board or not on board that's your choice <laughs> uh, so they got on board <laughs> um, the other thing I forgot to mention a lot of in a lot of cases you can do the diet for a span of like two or three years and then um, gradually kind of lower how restrictive you're being and how much fat you're taking in and still have the same benefit um, sometimes people even come completely off the diet and still see the, the benefit that um, came from being on it so I'm like you know I want to get this done now he's got the g-tube he's not eating orally right now this is the time to make it happen <laughs> so that's why you know I really pushed for it and so as of about six months ago he did get on the keto formula and um, now he's getting a blenderized diet where he gets some formula and some um, he gets green beans and carrots and avocado and things all blended up and put through his tube so it's really great so my personal experience having done a medical keto diet um, I will say anecdotally that I had a much <laughs> milder winter than I normally have usually my ticks are pretty <whistles> mild in the summer to almost non-existent and then they tend to get really bad in the winter I usually have tick attacks in the winter where I'm just like convulsively shaking um, and it it's very much a struggle generally in the winter so this winter was really mild I had one maybe two tick attacks I had one night in particular in February where I was just I was jerking my neck a lot and ticking and woke up like I couldn't turn my head to the right because I pulled something in there it was I couldn't look up I couldn't look down like I had a little bit of leftward movement and I could look straight and that was it <laughs> it was not fun um, but other than that and maybe like one other time in the winter I didn't really have tick attacks over this winter which was a significant improvement that was kind of my my anecdotal experience being on it a couple weeks ago uh, I dried up I stopped producing milk so at that point I was like okay well I don't have to do keto for any particular reason for me I was only doing it for our son so I started eating a lot more carbs than I had been and you know really interestingly for the first week there it was fine like I didn't notice I had a little bit of an increase in ticks um uh, not a lot uh until about a weekend and then all of a sudden like things went downhill very rapidly and i started having tick attacks regularly i've had oh three or four probably at least tick attacks in the last just couple of weeks huh huh so i'm kind of frustrated I do find it very interesting and you know the thing is with Tourette's syndrome it's such an erratic condition and it's so um, unpredictable like anything else could have caused my recent outbreak you know maybe I ate something else that affected me maybe there's some stress that's just been lying around that finally caught up to me maybe you know there's I mean it could have been anything it could have been nothing at all it just felt like popping out and causing an issue right now so you know it's it's very very difficult to say well you know this is clearly there's a connection here and and this is what caused it but I did um, like I have kind of step back some with the carbs I'm I've lowered my carb intake again I'm not being rigorous the way I was um, before so I don't know if it's gonna help I don't know if it ever did help in the first place again this is my personal experience anecdotal this is not scientific evidence but I do think it would be really interesting if a scientific study was done on it we know that Tourette syndrome is a neurological condition I mean it is also affected by <whistles> environmental factors but epilepsy is also a neurological condition that can be affected by environmental factors like flashing lights or flickering lights um, can trigger a seizure processing through this in my own head like it seems like a case could be made 
for for exploring the ketogenic diet for Tourette syndrome because we do know that it does work with epilepsy and obviously they're not the same condition but they are both neurological conditions and all of the extra fats going into the brain are what theoretically makes it work. So that's that's just my my thoughts on it. Um, again, I think a sci- an actual scientific study would be really neat to see to see if there is maybe a possible connection, but so hard with TS just because it is so unpredictable and can go into a waxing period for no readily apparent reason. Um, also, it's I mean, TS is all perspective. Like you can say, yeah, I feel way less ticky today. But if you compared today with a different day and like took video, for example, when someone was just going about their day, you might see that they had the same amount of ticks on each day, um, but they felt like they didn't have as many on one day. Or um, their premonitory urge, their tension inside to perform those ticks wasn't as strong that day. So it's just, it's very subjective, I feel like, with Tourette Syndrome, and it's very much personal perspective, so I I don't know that it would be even feasible to do a scientific study. But it would be cool. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying it would be cool. (laughs) So yeah, that's where I am right now. Um, Again, like, I've I've reduced, I've kind of stepped back again on carbs, but I don't, I don't know, guys. I feel like I've screwed it all up, and I can't fix it now. (laughs) So, um... Yeah, I'm going to be plugging away and uh, yeah. Um, We've already started school because the kids were desperate to start. So this is like our first official week of school. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing from here on out for a while is school with the kids. And like I'm basically just staying away from the world as much as possible because I can't handle all of the chaos and... Ugh, polarization right now. I cannot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's the update for me. Sorry it took me so long. For those wondering, um, our son is doing really, really well on the medical ketogenic diet. Um, his seizures have reduced a lot. We haven't had to stay in the hospital for his seizures in over a year now. Um, so basically since last August when Um, We were in the hospital and I first started researching the ketogenic diet. Um, We have not had to stay in the hospital again for seizures since then. So that's been really great (laughs) considering how often we were in and out his first six months of life. So yeah, he's doing really well overall on the diet and we're hopefully weaning off some of the pharmaceuticals. He's making good progress. So I think that's it. Ooh, shit bananas. I will talk to you guys again sooner rather than later. It will be less time than six months really for reals the next time i see you maybe i will play you a song on the ukulele Ooh, it's not very hard for me to pick up because i i play guitar so i feel like i'll be able to to strum out something pretty soon here (laughs) but i will talk to you guys later (laughs) once again everything i said on here was not medical advice just a personal anecdotal experience talk to your doctor talk to your dietitian before you go doing anything crazy (laughs) Bye, guys.